good morning everyone on behalf of our school family i sachi vadke from standard 9b take the honor to extend a warm welcome to respected principal teachers and my fellow students greetings to all of you occasion of 73rd republic day of the world's largest and most vibrant democracy in this land of ours enriched by diversity with many festivals our national festivals are celebrated by everyone with great patriotic fervor we celebrate festival of the republic day with enthusiasm and express our respect for the national flag and our faith in the constitution this day has come to mean a lot to all the indians 72 years ago on this very day we the people of india it enacted and gave to ourselves a unique constitution for all of us then this is the day to also pause and ponder over the core values that the constitution propounds these values justice liberty equality and fraternity in the preamble of constitution are sacred to all of us let's go back into the history and inquire why precisely these values guided our nation builders and the answer is obvious this land and its inhabitants have cherished these ideals from the time immemorial justice liberty equality and fraternity are the perennial principles of our philosophy of life since the ancient times they come to us from the dawn of this civilization through an unbroken chain it is of course the task of every generation to seek out the meaning of these values for its times as the freedom fighters did in their day so should we in our time these key principles should light our path to development dear friends today's program is an attempt to peep in the future and see how our hard working farmers brave soldiers and intelligent scientists have contributed to make india a superpower thus all our farmers soldiers and scientists deserve special appreciation and a grateful nation greets them on this auspicious occasion of republic day today's program is a salute to these people we indians live and die for humanity this indian ideal has been expressed by the great poet maithili sharan gupt in these words उसी उदार की सदा सजीव कीर्ति कूजती तथा उसी उदार को समस्त सृष्टि पूजती अखंड आत्म भाव जो असीम विश्व में भरे वही मनुष्य है कि जो मनुष्य के लिए मरे आई एम श्योर दैट दिस लव फॉर ह्यूमैनिटी एंड द स्पिरिट ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस विल टेक अस टू ग्रेट हाइट्स लेट अस हियर व्हाट स्वानंद कुलकर्णी फ्रॉम सेवेंथ डे हैज टू से Good morning respected madam teachers parents and all my dear friends greetings to all india is a country well known for its spirituality science philosophy technology as well as diversity in caste creed religion and culture hence india is known as a nation of unity and diversity but india has achieved stupendous growth in many sectors Today I would wish to talk about India's tremendous progress in science and technology immense achievement in space science and vast success in military power Science and technology has always been an integral part of Indian culture during the independence struggle our country witnessed great strides made by Indian scientists Since then the government of India has spent no effort to establish a modern science and technology infrastructure in the country. Over the years, we have seen scientists such as Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, Homi Jahangir Bhabha and Prasanth Chandra Mahala Nobis who not only helped build institutions but also helped make shaping policies regarding the same. Since the past two decades, 
Indian scientists have been doing path-breaking research in different fields such as agriculture, medicine, biotechnology, environment, industry, mining, nuclear power, space, etc. And recently, we also outpaced the world in the digital payment sector by means of digital apps like Bharat Pay, Beam, etc. We have become self-reliant in the sector, an achievement to be proud of. But still there is a long way to go which and that relies in our hands. From carrying parts of a rocket on a bicycle to finding water on the moon, the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO has come a long way since its inception and has been pioneering space missions with untiring zeal. Following the incredible success over the years, it is worthwhile to celebrate its journey, its challenges and its determination to overcome them. In the past seven decades, India has built satellites and sent probes to the moon and the Mars. It has acquired nuclear weapon capability and it has also established several nuclear power stations. And it has also demonstrated its firepower by means of different ranges of missiles. Don't you think that these are fabulous achievements of our scientists and technologists? The Indian National Committee for Space Research, INCOSPAR, was established by Jawaharlal Nehru under the Department of Atomic Energy in the year 1962. It further grew to become ISRO in the year 1969. Thus, the establishment of ISRO institutionalized space research activities in India. ISRO has made our country proud many times by its remarkable achievements such as Mars Orbiter Mission, Aryabhatta, Rohini, etc. ISRO has also successfully launched hundreds, more than 100 satellites in one go. Future missions of ISRO include Shukrayaan-1, Gaganyaan, Chandrayaan-3, Lupik, etc. How can we forget the noteworthy work of our late President Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam as the director of ISRO? His name itself brings goosebumps to every Indian. His journey from a paper boy to the President of India is truly inspirational. Dear friends, you know that the first tidal dock has been believed to have been built at Lord Hill around 2300 BC during the Indus Valley Civilization period at the port of Mangrol on the Gujarat coast. The Rig Veda, which has been written around 1500 BC, credits Varuna with the knowledge of the ocean, routes and describes naval expeditions. That means our rulers knew the significance of militaries even centuries ago. As per the 2015 Credit Swiss report, the Indian Armed Forces are the fifth powerful forces of the world, whereas the Global 2020 Firepower report states that our Indian Armed Forces are the fourth powerful military forces of the world. Wow, that is great! That means in no time, India will become the number one nation of the world. Our country's armed forces are well equipped in fighter weapons. The government of India to make our Indian armies, navies and the air force the strongest in the next years will procure a range of missiles, warships, fighter jets, etc. The Indian military is also technically equipped to protect our country from biochemical weapons, cyber attacks, drones, etc. The government of India, under its initiative Atmanirbhar India, is, is making six submarines and its plan has started from February 2015. The construction is planned to be com commenced on 2023 to 2024. The first submarine will come into service on the year 2032. Wonderful! How is the Josh? Hi, sir! How is the Josh? Hi, sir! Wonderful, dear friends! Dear friends, we should be proud of these achievements made by a country which had nothing seven decades ago. We should always make our motherland feel proud about us. Jai Hind! Thank you, Swanand. That was really inspiring. Dear friends, despite the serious calamity, we have succeeded in taking forward our activities in many spheres. Converting a crisis into an opportunity 
द प्राइम मिनिस्टर गेव अ कॉल ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान और सेल्फ रिलायंट इंडिया मिशन एडवर्सिटी ऑफन प्लेज द रोल ऑफ अ ग्रेट टीचर इट मेक्स अ स्ट्रॉगर एंड मोर कॉन्फिडेंट विद दैट कॉन्फिडेंस इंडिया हैज टेकन ग्रेट स्ट्राइड्स इन सेवरल सेक्टर्स The next act is a tribute to our heroes who have worked together to make Indians atmanirbhar atmanirbhar not only in economic sectors but also by uplifting their fellow citizens from poverty social stigmas etc Overcome that fear in my life. That it worked for others was a byproduct. 
I joined the Indian Freedom Movement under the influence of Mahatma Gandhi and participated in almost all major movements led by Mahatma Gandhi. I started acting as a defense lawyer for leaders involved with the Indian Freedom Movement whom the British authorities had imprisoned in 1942 during the Quit India Movement. Try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. No one has ever become poor by giving. I sought my soul, but my soul I could not see. I sought my God, but my God eluded me. And then I sought my brothers and my sisters, and in them I found all three. Thank you. Dear friends, I am sure you all agree that Republic Day celebration without patriotic songs can be hardly imagined. So, let us listen to our school choir who are set to invoke patriotism in us.
was indeed a soulful performance. India is moving forward and taking its rightful place in the world. During the recent years, its arc of influence has been expanding and encompassing the larger part of the world. Friends, when we say rising, the first emotion that comes to our mind is going from darkness to light. Let's watch our journey from where we were, where we are and where we will be in the future. I, Ms. Prinsi Kaviskar, along with my co-host, Master Yas Saraskar, wish you all happy 73rd Republic Day. On this historical day, that is 26 January 1950, India declared herself as a republic and accepted the constitution, which is the base of modern India. Today is the best day when we should pledge to preserve the real meaning, status, prestige of our country and the culture of humanity. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam had rightly said, dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts result in action. A developed India by 2050 is not a dream, it is a mission which we all Indians will surely take up and accomplish. So today, let's travel into a developed India. Our Honourable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, in the Rising India Summit had rightly said, Rising India to me means, rise of the pride of one billion Indians, the rise of country's self-respect. When the willpower of these hundred and half million people is united and resolutions become one, then even the unachievable becomes achievable. Impossible becomes possible. This united willpower will fulfill the resolve of new India. India is quickly transforming into a global superpower. The dream to see India as a superpower is becoming a reality with some mega projects marshaled up which will reshape India. Let's know more about those projects. The development of any nation depends on the transportation networks. The same will be achieved by the government of India with the implementation of Bharat Mala project. A host of new roads will be laid down in the nation. It aims to build 83,677 km highway that will connect major cities like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Kashmir, Srinagar, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Bihar, Meghalaya and Bhutan. The estimated cost of this project is 5.35 lakh crores. The Sagarmala project is India's push for a blue economy. This project is also project envisions the development of modern land water India's ports. The prime well, objective of the Sagarmala project is to promote in port India. land direct this and indirect development has been identified and to infrastructure to transport 9 goods to and fro from ports with India's 7,500 and cost effective post. line. It will be world's highest railway bridge which when completed will span the Chinab river at a height of 359 meter above the riverbed level. The estimated cost of this project is 12,000 crores. To give an impetus to Digital India, PM Modi ji had announced the Smart City Mission. The primary objective was to develop 
hundred smart cities within five years. Let's acquaint ourselves with two such smart cities. Noida is also known as the financial capital of Uttar Pradesh and has all the characteristics of a smart city. Along with industries, it also has educational facilities, long list of multi-speciality hospitals, healthcare services, Formula One track, metro connectivity, etc. Valera is a village in Andaman district of Gujarat. It is Asia's first greenfield high-tech smart city. It is the most promising and fastest developing smart city of India. It is a dream project envisaged by Narendra Modi ji when he was the chief minister of Gujarat. It is to be two times the size of Delhi and six times that of Shanghai. Excellent connectivity through rail, road, express highway, international airport, metro and port which connectively links the city on both national and global front. Do you know, it is also called India's very own Singapore for its modernism. Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor DMIC It is a massive infrastructure corridor currently under construction. It is a planned industrial development project between India's capital, Delhi and financial hub and major port city, Mumbai. It is a mega infrastructure project. It will cover a length of 1,483 km between Delhi and Mumbai. The estimated cost of this project is 90 billion US dollar. The Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Rail Corridor project is in the making and India's first bullet train will be up and running by the year 2026. This bullet train will run a distance of 508 km at a whooping 320 km per hour. This project will have two lines, 12 stations. The 7 hour journey between Mumbai and Ahmedabad will be covered in just two hours by the bullet train. Wow! Sounds so interesting! Hyperloop is an ultra high speed ground transportation system for passengers and cargoes. With this system, the travel time will be considerably reduced. The pods carrying passengers travel through tubes or tunnels in which most of the air will be removed to reduce friction. By 2050, Hyperloops in India will be available in 20 routes. Mumbai to Pune in 25 minutes seems like a dream, but it is a dream that is going to come true for every Mumbaikar who spent most of their time crammed up in a bumper to bumper traffic will be ready approximately by 2030. Talking about future transportation of vehicles, by the year 2050, 60 to 70 percent of vehicles will get converted into electrical vehicles which will be fast sharing or fully powered on electric cars. These vehicles have low running costs and are very environment friendly as they use no fossil fuels that is petrol or diesel. The economy of India is on fire. At present, India is ranked fifth in the size of world's economies. The world's second most populous country, India, is expected to see a massive growth over the next three decades, averaging 5% growth in GDP per year, making it one of the fastest growing economies in the world. By 2050, India would leapfrog to the third place in the ranking of world's largest economies with 6.8% in global GDP. India's economic progress has made its space program more visible and active as the country aims for greater self-reliance in space technology. India's space agency ISRO, ninth largest in the world, 
has been quickly advancing. It has sent two unmanned spacecraft to the moon. Owns one of the eight operational satellites orbiting Mars. It has lined up some astounding space mission in the upcoming years, like Aditya L1, 1920. It is India's first solar mission to study the sun. Due to global COVID-19 pandemic, this mission has been pushed from early 2020 to 2022. Chandrayaan 3, 2023. East Waste Planning collaboration with Japan and both will send joint mission to the moon's south pole. The primary function of this mission is to explore the existence of water on moon. Gaganyaan 2023 It is a much awaited human spaceflight mission of ISRO where three Indian astronauts will fly to the space. Mangalyaan 2 2024 Previous step of the Mangalyaan has encouraged our space agency to visit the red planet once again to understand the nature of the planet and its evolution. Shukrayani 2024 This mission aims to study about the formation of Venus, its atmosphere and its interaction with solar wind. Forget about missions to visit and come back from space. How about establishing our country's space station up there? Sounds amazing, isn't it? India is planning to have a space station within a decade which will help them to stay for a longer time in space to conduct experiments. India is one of the most powerful militaries in the world with the potential of becoming the superpower in the future. Indian Army has 1.4 million active military personnel, which is second largest in the world next to China. It ranks fourth in the world in terms of aircrafts, has 1100 fighter planes. India's defense budget is 64 billion US dollar, third largest in the world. By 2050, it is believed that 5% robot soldiers and unmanned tanks will be used in the Indian Army. India has grown as an economy and as a society in the last several decades. India is quickly transforming into a global superpower. Over the past several decades, India's population, economy and military have expanded rapidly. So, let's watch bewildering video which showcases India as a superpower nation. India is quickly transforming into a global superpower. For thousands of years, India has been a center for human civilization, a heart for trade, religion, history, and culture. To attract investment and foster economic growth, India is pursuing many large-scale mega projects. Develop several more corridors between Amritsar, Delhi, and Kolkata, Mumbai, and Bengaluru, Bengaluru and Chennai, and Chennai and Visakhapatnam. These corridors, along with other projects, will form a golden quadrilateral of infrastructure between the megacities of Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, and Chennai. While it is continuously developing Navi Mumbai, where it is building a $2.2 billion international airport. Hopefully, these mega projects and smaller ones will successfully attract investment and boost economic growth, making India a global economic powerhouse. In addition to its infrastructure mega projects, India has several major advantages that will help lift it to superpower status. First of all, its shape naturally provides the country with lots of coastline. Almost all of the country is within 1,000 kilometers of the ocean. This natural advantage improves the efficiency of getting goods to port. In addition, India's vast coastline strategically sits along one of the world's busiest shipping routes. This situation brings plenty of business to its already existing ports and will do so for its new trade hubs and smart cities. Furthermore, India now serves as the largest democracy in the world, right in the center of Asia. Because of this, it is able to politically influence both countries in the Middle East and Southeast Asia, 
belonging to China while garnering the political support of other world democracies. Throughout the past decade, India has improved its ties with other major democracies around the world, including with the US and many European nations. During this time, it has also worked to develop friendly ties with China and has tried to improve relations with Pakistan. And since Narendra Modi became Prime Minister in 2014, India has increased its assertiveness in leadership and foreign affairs. It has openly challenged China on disputes in the South China Sea, has increased its aid and interference in other countries, and has publicly expressed its opinions on international events. In the future, India will almost certainly increase its assertiveness in foreign politics. India is participating in other technology sectors. It is part of the ITER program for nuclear fusion and is helping advance biotechnology, IT, the medical field, and many other technologies. Lastly, India's cultural influence is expanding. The Indian film industry, Bollywood, is the largest in the world by box office revenue and tickets sold. Not only is it popular in India, its movies are attracting millions globally, especially in Africa. In addition, Indian cuisine, music, festivities, and fashion have all found expanding global markets. This cultural influence is also being spread by India's overseas population. India has the largest overseas population in the world, with 32 million people of Indian origin living abroad. Many of these individuals have found success, forming strong bridges and links. In the UK and the US, they are the highest income ethnic demographic. In the future, India's overseas population will continue to spread its culture. Finally, not only are Indian people going to foreign countries, foreign people are going to India. In 2018, 17.4 million tourists visited the country. This is still relatively low, making India the 23rd most popular tourist destination in the world. However, with a rich history and beautiful sites, tourism is growing rapidly. In 2018, India received over three times as many tourists as a decade before. By 2028, it's projected that India will receive 30.5 million tourists, almost double 2018. These tourists will contribute to the economy and absorb the nation's rich culture, spreading India's global influence and cultural and political influences are expanding, setting it up for global superpower status. Wow! It was an incredible video! India is indeed an incomparable country. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. We Indians do believe in our dreams and pursue it. I, Master Yash Salaspar, along with my co-host, Ms. Prinsika Viskar, once again wish you all Happy 73rd Republic Day. Jai Hind! Dear friends, here I would also like to mention Fit India Movement launched in 2019. Why do we need a Fit India Movement? Is it a dream for a healthy nation? Yes, you are right. A healthy individual, healthy family, healthy society are the essentials to achieve the dream of a new India. The next display by our students shows how we too are committed in this mission of Fit India. So, let us watch.
let us not forget that the rise of india should be the rise of pride of 1 billion indians when the will power of these billion indians is united their resolutions become one then even the unachievable becomes achievable even the impossible becomes possible so friends on this auspicious occasion as we celebrate our 73rd republic day let this united will power fulfill our resolve of new india or the vision of rising india